So I've already pre-cut my uh, printed circuit board material. I got a little bit of a gouge, so it's not going to be on the pattern area, so we're all right there. And the first thing I want to do is drive some alignment holes through here <clears throat> so I can get my top and bottom layers aligned all right. And I'm going to drill that component hole right there and one of the crystal uh, holes right there to use as my alignment. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is going to get this thing taped down so it doesn't move. Now we'll go ahead and put it up on the drill here. Exactly where I wanted it, but it should be close enough. Yeah, it seems alright. Be good enough for the alignment, I think. So what I'm going to do is I have these uh, two transparencies I printed. They're pretty high density. I did them on a photocopier machine. And they came out pr pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim these down to a little bit smaller than this piece of circuit board here. And these have two sides. You have the shiny side, and then you have the toner side, and the toner side is the side that will be going towards the board. If you place the film toner side up, this side up, there's still a little gap, the thickness of the film, that light can get in and creep underneath your traces, and it lead to undercutting of your traces, which you don't want. So you want to have, when you expose this, you want to have your toner right against the board and then that's going to be squashed by a piece of glass so no light will be able to sneak in on the underside so what I'm doing now is I'm lining up these two holes that I previously drilled on the uh, template and getting them as close as I can get the holes are a little off so it's not going to be perfect and then I'll tape this down so now that I'm ready to apply the film I'm going to go ahead and peel this is going to be the back side first Try not to touch the actual photo resist there. And I'm going to line this up over the holes. And I did this capacitor up here. You see that? There we go. And a crystal down here. The holes don't line up perfectly, so I'm going to split the difference. And I'll do the same when I do the front piece. And that should get us close enough, anyways, for this board. Not high precision. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape this down here, trying to leave a gap. The tape exposes, uh, blocks some of the UV, will cause a little slower exposure. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape the other side as well. Make sure it's flat. And sorry, I'm missing that. I'm going to go ahead and put, push that down there. And we now have the back side there. And next I'm going to do the front. I'm going to do the same way, so I'm not going to bother showing it. I'll show you when it's done, though. All right, so I've applied the other side here. And lined it up with the holes. That's visible there a little bit. And I'm going to wipe the dust off of that. Um, this is a 500 watt halogen light. The front glass has been taken off the front because that has a UV filter on it. So this actually makes a pretty impressive UV exposure light, more than one might think. 
As this light's so powerful, I'm going to set the exposure time for 1 minute and 30 seconds per side. And I'll start up the lamp right now. And I do keep a pair of uh, brazing goggles because this light's bright and I don't want to be staring at all that uh, raw UV. And just blew the lamp. Okay, so I had to go a slightly different route. I have this UV light I bought. I've never used it. I did turn it on and run it about 10 minutes to break the bulbs in. That's about it. Let me go ahead and set that there. Plug it in. Turn it on. And we'll go ahead and start the 1 minute and 30 second timer. Seem that's about the recommended amount with this unit. So that's two minutes. Go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to flip the PCB and artwork over and expose the top side. Seconds. Stop there. Over. 31.9 seconds. Get the light out Over. of the way. So there's the board after exposure. It doesn't and shouldn't look much different. Uh, once we take the film off, you might be able to see a difference, however. And if you look real closely, you can see the image of the board is burned into there. Let's wait for a focus. There you go, you can see a slight yellow color. And the same on this side. So we're going to go ahead and stick that in the developer, which is why I'm wearing my gloves now. Alright, so here's the developer. I'm just going to slosh that around a bit. Try not to spill it too much. It's sodium hydroxide. You see the board's already starting to develop there. Just kind of bright brush this lightly. See how it's going. Now with the sodium hydroxide developer it is possible to over develop. Uh, but I want to make sure I don't underdevelop under either because then it's a real pain in the neck to etch. It's coming out pretty good so far. And then I'm going to go ahead and rinse this in the water over here. Alright, so here's the board post-development. Looks pretty good. I like how the pads turned out for the uh, AVR. And my drill is probably a little big for those, but that's alright. I'll just bend the pins over onto the traces. I'm not too worried about it. But the alignment should be pretty good on this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in some ferric chloride and we'll let that etch away. It'll take a while um, because it's fairly cold in here so the etching's going to be cold. And I'll probably try to heat it up a little bit beforehand. But we'll see how that goes. I like using these glass jars for the etching. Uh, you can kind of slosh it around. Um, if the board's big enough, it doesn't get stuck in there and it gets good exposure on both sides. Nothing's staying against the flat surface. And this is the etching I'm using. It's ferric chloride from Radio Shack. They probably won't be around much longer uh, for the looks of things. So if you need some and you don't want to mail order it, go ahead and pick it up there. And I have to go above the board even. Um, that way I'll be able to reach it and grab it and check it every so often. And so I'm going to let that etch and every so often I'll give it a little jiggle. Flop the board over. And it'll do its own thing. 
As long as you check on it every so often, you don't need to constantly shake or jiggle it unless you want it really fast. So that one was pretty cool and it was taking a long time. Uh, so I stuck it in a pan filled with hot tap water to heat up the etchant and things are moving along much faster now. Every so often you can grab it and shake it. I put something over the top though because it will splash in a jar like this. You see little splashes there already. You certainly don't want to get that on you. Uh, it stains everything and it is an acid. But the board's almost there so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it. And I think it may actually be there. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off. So here's how the board turned out after etching. I think it looks pretty good. Pads for the uh, AVR look good. The protected copper isn't over etched. I did a board earlier that was overexposed and all this open copper here uh, over etched and it was actually pock, pock looking. See a couple little scratches and dings but nothing that's going to matter. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next step is going to be putting the solder mask on. So now that I've etched my uh, the photographic process and etched the circuit board, uh, my next steps I want to do a dry mask um, or a dry film solder, solder mask on this. Uh, so I need to clean the rest of the resist off. That happens pretty easily with acetone. Just takes a little bit and it comes right up. And this will also remove any greases on the surface. You'll notice that the acetone will leave some fogginess and just get rid of that by buffing it out. Alright, so the next step is we need to put the solder mask uh, film on here. Um, make sure there's no dust on this thing to be really clean. And so we're going to go ahead and take the solder mask. I just need to change out my razor blade here real quick. I go through a lot of these. Um, it's nice to have a very sharp point all the time. This blade's not particularly dull. The point's broken off though. Um, but it's so nice to do everything with a sharp blade. So every new project or even depending on the length of the project I'll change the blade quite a bit. And get a nice sharp one. So this is a dry film solder mask. It's got a uh, matte side and a shiny side. The matte side's going to go towards the board but for right now I just need to size it out. And it doesn't need to be the full size of the board. This board's going to get cut down so I just need to be large enough to cover the circuit area. So I'm going to go ahead and Cut there, and we'll just do down a little more, and down, select one piece, and it's going to be the same for the other side. This mask film is pretty cheap. You can buy it on eBay. I think it's under Dynamask 5000 or something like that. It's $25 for five, eight and a half by 11 sheets, I believe, uh, which is more than enough to do these little circuit boards. Um, it is UV sensitive, and I am under a fluorescent light, so you need to work pretty quick. Um, first step is to remove the film from the matte side. It's going to be near impossible to do. Try something else. I'll try. Uh, Using the edge of the razor blade. I have so much overhang here, it's not really going to matter, anyways, if I scrape up the surface a little bit. Alright. And we got to take this and get it onto the circuit board, trying to avoid as many bubbles as possible. Push it down 
Yeah. All right, that's pretty good to start with. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Push in around the traces. Um, this will tend to tent a little bit around the traces since there are two different levels. Uh, the, you know, the trace is a little bit higher than the surface of the circuit board. So if you push in real good, that will get you as much as tight down as you're going to get. And just check the other side make sure it's good. And I'm going to heat up the laminator and for now I'm going to put this in a dark spot so it doesn't get exposed. So while the laminator is here, I just want to show you, this is the first board I did using this material. And you can see lots of raised edges and stuff like that. The printer I have doesn't lay down toner real thick and um, the pads I wanted removed actually got uh, too much UV and I had to scrub a lot to get it off and so you can see it's um, some spots look okay and others just a mess. In general I don't like it. So what I'm going to be doing for this exposure is I'm going to double up on the transparencies. I'm going to print them twice and then I'll just layer them over each other. My, my printer doesn't have a toner density adjustment on it. So I've got the solder mask uh, material on the board and the fusers or the uh, laminators heated up. So I'm going to go ahead and run this view through a few times just to adhere it to the board better. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and stick it in. This laminator has a reverse switch on it so I can roll this back and forth a few times. Now this material has actually got two protective layers on it. There's the one we took off which exposed the adhesive so we could stick it to the board. And then once we expose it, um, we'll take the top layer off and that will allow us to um, develop it. Yeah, I see some pretty big bubbles here. Let's see if we can get rid of those. I don't really have the temperature set to too high on this. It's on 150. I'm just trying to get the adhesive to soften up and stick to the board better. Um, if you get it too high, you can kind of squish things out and it doesn't work out real well. So, all right. so here's the end result of that rolling. And you can see there's bubbles in here. Um, you can try squeezing those out to the edge. If you've ever done vinyl application, it's a lot like that. Um, you can also poke holes to squeeze the air bubble out. Of course, that'll give you a hole in your um, solder mask when you're done. But if it's in an area that it doesn't really matter, it's all right. Try to push the air down through your trace if you have bubbles. Push it along where the traces go out to the edge of the board because uh, the air can get through and little raised edges along here um, so I'm done doing that for now all right so here are the masks for the uh, solder mask these are anything that's black the mask will soften and get removed from the circuit board and so these are just all the pads for the board and that's that Oops. so we're just going to position those on there Tape them down, expose it, and uh, do the same for the back side. And then we'll go ahead and remove any of the lamination. Uh, so again, I see another pretty big bubble here. So I'm just going to squeeze that out. In here too. It's all right to poke a hole where there's going to be no solder mask and just push the air bubble towards that area. So these are my films and I printed two of each and I'm just going to stack them and tape them together um, to increase the print density uh, which will help block more UV and help in the exposure. So I'm going to go do that real quick and then we'll tape these to the board. So I've got my uh, two layers ta uh, taped together. They're pretty dense now I'm lining them up on the circuit board and just placing them. I remember it's toner side down uh, for the best best exposure, it'll work either way. Uh, but if you put it with the toner side facing the board, that gets it the closest and keeps any light from penetrating underneath the side. 
Just the uh, same as doing the photo development for the etching part. All right, and that's ready for exposure now. I'm going to do two minutes on either side, and I'm going to use this uh, UV exposure lamp I used last time. It's actually got a two-minute timer on it, which works out great. And I'm just going to put a sheet of glass on top of it to weigh it down. Uh, we're going to do that side first. Put this board in. Put the glass on top. And I'm just going to put, that, that, put a little piece of board in here. So level all the way across and we're going to expose for two minutes. So this should just be about done right now for this side and then I'll flip this over and we'll expose the other side for two minutes and then we have to let this rest for five minutes. Um, so I'm flipping this over now. I'm going to go let this uh, run for two minutes on this side. And I'm going to go prepare, prepare the developer, which is sodium carbonate and water, um, or washing soda. It's also known as you can pick it up from the store, fortunately, so it's no special uh, chemicals you need. We're sitting about five minutes after the exposure, so we're going to go ahead and cut the transparencies off and develop it. Or tear them off. Unlike the photo resist, you can't really see a color change in that. So I've got my solution of sodium carbonate and water, and we're just going to dip that in and start brushing over it. And you'll see a you know, good angle here. And you see the areas that are exposed start changing color once they're in the sodium bicarbonate. So we'll just keep brushing over till that washes off. And I'm just using an acid brush with the bristles cut short. And those big holes cleaned up pretty quick. And you see the pads coming clear. And I don't want to brush too much and lift the edges of the material. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and work on the other side for a little bit. And you see that's already coming up ready to go. Pull that up and look at it real quick. And got some wrinkles in it, but it's not terrible. Getting there, still have a little ways to go. And I'm gonna go rinse this off with uh, tap water till it doesn't feel slick anymore. There it is all dried off, and you see there's some not so great spots like there. Um, but the other side turned out pretty good, which is where most of the components will be. I see a couple of alignment errors, but I can work around those. So what I'm going to do now is to cure the uh, solder mask the rest of the way, as I'm going to expose each side for about 30 minutes a piece, and that should harden it up pretty good. Alright, we're about done with the exposure on this side here. Oh, we are done. Um, just hardening up the resist on that side. I'm turn that off, get it out of the way. And as you can see, the resist is hardened up quite a bit here. So, next step is I have some little cleanup, a little bit of cleanup to do on this. Um, I had some overlapping areas, and I'll just scrape, just scrape that off from those spots, and have to drill some holes, and we're good to go.